Hey, what's up everyone? It's me again. Uh, this is line six part go advanced tips number four. So I'm very much continuing on the last video, which was of course about the low end control. And I strongly suggest that you check that video first before you see this one, because I will be using the exact same blocks and principles to say a few words, how you can uh, control your high end. So in the first video about the low end, I've talked about the parametric EQ. And the reason why I always talk about this thing is that uh, it comes as a default EQ inside every new preset. So if you scroll to page two of this parametric EQ block, you will see the low cut first here. And again, let's check the video to see what I had to say about that one. And if you scroll to page number three there, you will see that there's a high cut control. And usually uh, there's not too much information from guitar amps, uh, sorry, from guitar cabinets above 6 or 7k. It usually very much drops above 6k. However, we are in the digital realm, so we are definitely uh, emulating this analog stuff, but we are in the digital world very much. And one thing that's very much uh, characteristic of digital audio, and you probably heard this numerous times, is that it can be harsh. So how can you deal with harsh low end? So first thing that I suggest is that you that you try a high cut. Now, where to start? Mm, one thing that I usually discriminate are clean and dirty tones. For clean tones, when you want them to be crystal clean, I suggest that you try to leave a bit more high end. So when you're doing with a when you're dealing with a clean tone, I suggest that you start your high cut at 10k and then slowly uh, slowly bring it down down to 9k, down to 8k, down to 7k, and even down to 6k or below, and then see what did you lose from that clean tone. Uh, when I'm dealing with heavily distorted tones for lead sounds for heavy rhythm sounds. I usually drop this value below 7k. And again, this is not me speaking just random, no random values, because I did mix a lot of guitar tones and I really found myself doing this a lot. And when guitars are double track or quad track, the high end can get really nasty as well as the low end. So applying a deeper high cut than you might uh, think is necessary is not a bad thing to do. So even dropping it down to 6k or a bit below, down to 5.5 by 5.6 or whatever, will probably be a very more than a decent tone for a, for a rhythm guitar. Okay, so that's mm, number one. Mm, that's my tip number one. So use the parametric EQ. It's always there inside every new preset. So why not? The second EQ that uh, I mentioned in the previous video for the high end, for the low end control, I'm gonna mention for the high end control as well. So you, we, we have here the 10 band graphic EQ. And if you scroll to page number two, you will see a couple of bands here. So I mentioned this in my previous video, but if you still did not see it, uh, be aware that this 16 kilohertz band is not a bell. So it's not a bell, it's actually a shelf. So a shelf means that it, it does this to your tone. So this is your spectrum and a shelf dips it like this. And if you're, if you're doing a bell dip, it, so this is your tone, it's your spectrum and bell does this. So bell does this. <laughs> this is an amazing way to demonstrate things with my hand. So I suggest that you start, no matter whether it's a clean tone, a distorted tone, very heavy tone, whatever. I suggest that you start with this 16k band and do not be afraid to drop this sucker down because again it starts very high, it starts up at, up at 16 kilohertz and this is a gentle uh, shelf type of cut that you're doing with this, uh, with this 10 band uh, graphic EQ. So I suggest that you drop this uh, first, uh, like drop it drastically, drop it 
10 dB or more, drop it there, let's say 9.1, and see what you have there. If you still feel that you're not cutting deep enough into your tone, why not use the, uh, s uh, the second band uh, that we see here, which is the 8 kHz, and drop that thing by a dB, 2, maybe 3, and then you will definitely, when you combine these two, you will feel that you've now lost some of the high end. Again, you're not losing anything, you're trying to eliminate the harshness of, of, of your tone. And uh, finally, what I want to say is that, okay, let me go back here. So, uh, as well as in the first video here, uh, so I mentioned uh, in the low end control video that you can increase the distance if you want uh, less low end. However, I do not suggest that you <laughs> bring back the distance of the microphone because that will effectively make your tone more bass heavy so the harsh, the top end will not be so prominent but you will suffer from a mud, you can suffer from a muddy tone and a harsh tone at the same time but there's a high cut control right here and if you're not using the parametric EQ, if you're, if you're not using the tampan graphic EQ, you can use the high, the high cut control of the uh, cab block to make your high cut right there. And again, I suggest that you start higher than you might think it's needed. Start at 12k, drop it down to 10, drop it down to 8, to 7, to 6, to 5, to 4, and then figure out where's the sweet spot. Is it 6.3? Or is it 7.2? It's your call and it's your ears and it's your tone and it will always be your tone. And that's it, my three tips for uh, high-end control inside the Line 6 Pathgo. Peace.